Welcome everyone, my name is Anushruti Singh and I am the Assistant Editor at SME Futures. India's B2B marketplace has grown significantly in recent years. According to market data, Indian B2B industry is growing so quickly that Indian B2B startups account for 43% of Indian unicorns. At the same time, technology has transformed the way B2B in India used to work. Now, Indian companies are heavily investing in the B2B segment given their ability to transform Indian businesses and lead to the formalization of the traditional supply chain. To discuss the same, today we have Mr. Bhadresh Pathak with us. He is the business head of LNG Sufin. LNG Sufin is an integrated B2B marketplace for buying and selling industrial and construction products and services. Mr. Pathak, thank you for joining us today for this session. Thank you, Anushruti. Mr. Paraj, please share with us why did LNT decided to foray into B2B e-commerce space? Okay, so LNT has been into the construction business for about eight decades. It's a very old, established company. We had our procurement systems which were fairly established, and they were dealing with SMEs, right? And we understand how the SME works, how the SME ecosystem works. We procure a lot of these engineering goods, MRO items uh, from the MSMEs and we, uh, you know, understood their problems. They had a lot of pain points when uh, they became a member of a supply chain, supplying to any large corporate or mid-sized companies or even the MSMEs, lots and lots of pain points were there and uh, we uh, as a national player, as, as, a, as an MNC who operates in 50 uh, or more countries, we thought that let us address this problem in India first. We have seen how the, the global supply chains operate. They offer, operate very efficiently. Why not to bring those efficiencies in India and solve the pain points of MSMEs? And if that happens, uh, it can scale up and we can have a globally competitive supply chain through digitization. And that was the idea behind LNT's foray into B2B e-commerce, primarily from the viewpoint of helping the MSMEs in, uh, in, in becoming more efficient as supply chain members. So, so what are the main bottlenecks hindering e-commerce and MSME development in the country? And how is LNT Sufin solving some of these? Okay, see here, uh, when it comes to the B2B e-commerce or B2B, uh, you know, I, I would say broadly speaking, B2B trade rather, the first and the foremost thing is that how do you deal with unknown entities, right? Uh, so, uh, when you deal with unknown entities across the geography of the country, uh, you need to know the entity well. You need to know the risk profile. You need to know how a supplier would be or how a buyer would be. Now, how do you create trust amongst the dealing entities that was lacking? So, number one is the discovery of seller, price, product. Number two is the trust that the platform creates amongst the dealing entities. So, this is where, uh, you know, they, they get an upper edge when they deal with the platform. Now, when you say that, what are the other bottlenecks uh, when it comes to the MSME trade? Yes, there are lots and lots of them. Number one is... Uh, the working capital right so uh, these msmes are typically deprived of working capital the banks uh, you know they are not you know very very proactively funding this working capital gap because they go by the historical trends of the balance sheets etc which is a static data it's not a dynamic data there are 8 lakh crore worth data have not paid to these msmes on time they are still struggling for getting their payments so working capital is a mother of all problems which we try to solve for the msmes through our banking partners and nbfcs so what we do is we provide suppliers the working capital to supply the goods while trading on the platform and the buyers to purchase the goods while trading on the platform and these facilities are coming to them in a plethora of different kind of products like like uh, unsecured overdrafts, term loans, uh, invoice discounting, etc. Then other problem is logistics. Uh, so what happens is that MSMEs don't have an access to superior logistics uh, facilities across the country. Uh, if you want to deliver your, your you know, uh, goods, 
to remote corners of the country they need to you know heavily uh, depend on the logistic partners who, who perhaps many times they don't vote favorably when msmes are involved so when the platform comes into the picture and arranges for the logistics it becomes very very cost effective for them because platform is an amalgamation of all these services which are there digitally possible for msme so always the platform has an upper hand in negotiating the rates for the uh, participants on the platform so that is how working capital finance and logistics is also available the other thing is the payment gateway uh, which provides a lot of convenience while fulfilling the transaction the buyers can choose any medium and pay to the supplier online through the platform's nodal account so this uh, gateway which is there is also very much uh, fruitful in making the transactions uh, possible and reconciliation of these transactions invoice to invoice matching etc is also very much possible facilitating the accounting uh, related issues uh, so this is a host of you know all uh, all the uh, features which are available under one roof so we call it a one stop uh, shop or an integrated solution for msmes what are the other unique value propositions that sufin provide yeah so see sufin has very unique uh, facilities as uh, when we talk of digital properties uh, we have a unique request for quotation uh, facility wherein a buyer can ask for quotations from thousands of suppliers there is no limit to the number of suppliers for 200 products at the same time right at, at the most 200 products can be uh, taken in one request for quotation uh, and this inquiry can be sent to thousands of suppliers on the platform all across the country or depending on the search criteria of the buyer there could be search criteria like local suppliers there could be state level suppliers national level suppliers so whatever criteria one needs to put that criteria can be their filtering criteria and these requests for quotations are sought from these suppliers and this is very very unique feature because it creates a sense of competitiveness the buyer gets the best price and at the end of the process you get the whole comparison including the technical specifications so the product wise technical specifications are compared plus the prices are also compared and that gives a very very scientific way to the buyer to procure the material or procure the goods that he intends to we have uh, you know uh, so many smes and mid size companies who don't have very established brands they are manufacturing they are oems they don't have very established brands and they need to compete with the uh, large uh, companies many times mncs who have very well established reputed brands and established dealer one networks so what sufin does is they come into a digital partnership with these mid sized companies they take their products to the market through the digital platform so we are a digital channel for these oems and they are able to reach out to the markets through us besides that what we also do is that we provide the channel finance or the dealer or a distributor finance to the entities who are involved in their supply chain which which puts them at a level playing field with large companies now with sufin coming into play because of the trust that it generates because of the lnt uh, parentage lots of banks are believing in this and they are providing the channel funding to the dealers and the distributors of this mid sized oems and that is very very beneficial to them they are able to raise the working capital funds at very very cheap uh, cheaper rate of interest and as you explore the platform more and more you will find that it's extremely user friendly and the physical processes in a real market are simulated i mean uh, they are exactly matching the digital processes but with a lot of efficiency convenience and uh, saving on the time and the productivity so can you also elaborate on uh, sofin's revenue model so we have various uh, revenue generation models one is a transaction based revenue so we have commission as a percentage of the transactions that pass through the platform so as a percentage of what we call as gmv gmv is the gross value of the merchandise uh, which is traded on the platform and as a percentage of that as a certain percentage of that that is one of the models where we generate the revenue second uh, model is uh, subscription uh, which is uh, a revenue which we generate from the sellers actually the sellers uh, are coming on the platform to make their products more and more prominent 
they create their branding they create their presence nationally digitally uh, so they get an e-commerce uh, all absolutely at very 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 negligible cost so we charge some subscription for them to create visibility for them so that is another model and the third model is uh, the financing uh, which we arrange for our participants and that gives us uh, some revenue the fourth is the logistical services which we provide and it also generates revenue so there are uh, you know uh, small small things which uh, we you know take from the participants and sustain our business operations that is our revenue model sir you mentioned that uh, capital is the mother of all the challenges so how uh, is sufin helping in uh, helping smes in bridging their financing needs uh typically how it happens in the physical world is that they evaluate a proposal based on the balance sheet data they take the balance sheet of last 3 years they ask for business projections for over next 5 years and they do a lot of elaborate evaluation in terms of financial ratios and health of the balance sheet etc but we have a unique way in which our financing partners uh, assess our you know uh, the people who are desirous of finance they uh, study uh, through a proprietary algorithm only the balance only the bank statements so based on the bank statements uh, they are able to infer the health of the business besides that we have we do have an access to the credit history of the participants so that is also available through our fintech partners and uh, so we we actually uh have we have developed that kind of uh, very unique method of analyzing the credit worthiness of the of the customers on the platform and this is done in a very very quick uh, manner uh very uh, digitally and it takes almost a few minutes to uh, give sanction uh, uh, to a working capital uh, you know uh, borrower on the platform so that is something which is very unique we do invoice discounting uh, that is again a unique feature we also do the channel financing as i said for mid corporate oems uh, to support their dealers distributors we also run vendor financing programs for the buying programs for the buying needs of the corporates wherein we we give vendor finance to their suppliers so lots of these products are there as per the requirement we give this uh, to the uh, participants on the platform so uh, going forward how do you foresee importance of b2b e-commerce space in india and how it can contribute to gdp see uh, b2b e-commerce uh, when i say e-commerce is at a very very nascent stage right now Uh, because indian market typically is a trust driven market as i said uh, it doesn't blindly rely on a supplier or a buyer just because they want to sell or buy something uh, it is trust driven you will require a lot of references in dealing because you have to save on your business risk you take a business risk while dealing with in, uh, you know unknown entities as i say so it's at a very very nascent stage uh, but Uh, given the importance of digitization in this space uh, the importance of b2b e-commerce is going to grow significantly and exponentially i would say uh, because uh, you know when supply chains become more and more efficient they require digitization they require digital platforms uh, where to interact you cannot have the old traditional way of calling the suppliers on phone or sending them emails to quote and then decide after a lot of persuasion so all these things which are there right now in b2b trade can only go and the trade can uh, scale up exponentially if we go digital and that is only possible through platforms internationally it has happened it has happened in china it has happened in us uh, now it is india's turn and we will definitely uh, go there in fact the market size is huge over here and if things move in the right direction there is a huge scope for b2b e-commerce so down the line uh, what is the road map for lnt sufin lnt sufin has right now launched in the domestic market uh, we will uh, plan to go uh, overseas uh, very soon uh, we will also start procuring the goods for our buyers and ensuring the quality packaging etc ourselves 
so that is also very much on the cards besides that uh, we intend to uh, in introduce the quality checks uh, also on the platform done by the platform itself uh, we also intend uh, to provide a lot of uh, you know support and guidance to msmes uh, in understanding the markets approaching the markets doing market research for them helping them in you know expanding on a large scale mentoring is also very much there on the cards besides that a uh, lot of things which are you know ordered these days are also custom made right so for that uh, supin will also develop that uh, capacity to uh, get the items manufactured which are tailor made or made to specifications so these are some of the things uh, which uh, we have in pipeline for the year and will be launched very soon Thank you Mr Patel for the insights we appreciate you being here thanks for joining us today Thank you Anushruti it was wonderful uh, you know and thank you so much for having me on this uh, program